Greetings, Corpse Clubbers, and welcome to another episode of Corpse Club Horror BFFs. I am one of your Horror BFFs, Patrick Bromley, back after a long break, joined as always by my Horror BFF, Heather Wixon. Hey, Heather. Hello, Patrick. Wow, it has been like, I don't know, did, have we done one this year? I don't even know at this point. I think what, we've what is done one this anymore? year. What is time? It's a flat <laughs> circle. That's what I hear. <laughs> I wish. It just <laughs> seems like wh- where, wherever I need the time, it just never quite is there for me. So no. I don't know. I'm chasing it constantly. So, but mm-hmm. I'm glad we were able to do this. Yes, it's fun to be back on the official Daily Dead podcast talking slasher sequels correct correct last summer we did a we we sort of did our own little slasher summer slasher marathon okay mini marathons i think is what we did um and so we were like let's let's challenge ourselves let's do slasher sequel marathons for summer and yeah it turns out that most of those just exist in big huge franchises that we talk about all the time anyway so this was a little bit of a challenge, but a challenge I accepted and met. <laughs> I uh, didn't have a chance to re-listen to our episode from last year, and therefore I'm starting to panic thinking I may have just programmed <laughs> some of the same movies. I might have one that overlaps. I don't even know. Yeah. Um, repeat ourselves? I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know, let's let's, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, what it's it's gonna happen. Sorry, probably. Right. I don't even remember. I don't remember what I had for dinner last night, actually. So, if you're you know, not worried about it, I won't worry about it either. It's like NBC back in the day. You know, it's new to it's new to you. If you didn't hear it before, it's new to you now. It sounds right? like you're saying it sounds like you're saying new to you, and I'm like new to me. New to you, new to me. <laughs> All right, no, that's wrong. That's that's wrong. All right, we're 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 really kicking off on a high mark uh, high marks here. So everybody's already tuned out. They're gone. All right, good. Then it's just us. Let's change the topic. All right. Well, let's let's yeah. Well, we could talk about slasher sequels. Those are still fun for us to chat about. All right, I'm into it. So, all right, cool. What is your first slasher sequel? All right. So again, as I mentioned, it was like okay. It was, slasher sequels i want to watch in the summer okay well that eliminates the entire halloween franchise (laughs) right and so i was just like okay you know and i'm like do i want to consistently do i want to talk about more nightmare movies do i want to talk about friday 13th that might come up later anyway um so i actually uh just revisited probably one of my favorite modern sequels that we've had modern slashers slash sequels that we've had in the last 10 years over this past weekend, which is the strangers pray at night. Oh. From Johannes Roberts. Very nice. Yes. And even though it technically doesn't take place in the summer, it they, is, they don't have to take place in the summer, do they? No, but sometimes right. I, like, but, I, but thing, the one fun thing about like a lot of slashers, is they sort of have a summer vibe to them. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the burning and, you know, stuff like, like you just get these summer vibes. So anyways, um, I didn't use it as a criterion, but in certain cases it helps, if that makes sense. It does. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, Strangers Pray at Night for me was just probably one of the biggest surprises that I had uh, in 2018 because one, I didn't even know that a sequel was actually finally happening until like the first trailer came out um and i'm somebody and i know there's some people there's a lot of people out there who don't enjoy the first uh the strangers um i don't even think you haven't seen it still yet i still have not (laughs) (laughs) oh have you watched mirrors yet has that happened yet i have seen mirrors oh my god you saw mirrors and you didn't tell me (laughs) sorry Oh my God! Here, are it, we BFFs, Patrick? We were. I was think, trying to think of a movie to do for episode six hundred of F this movie, and I was like, "Well, it might be funny if we did mirrors." So we did. Oh my goodness! Anyway, uh, so The Strangers for me is probably one of my favorite. It's it's definitely a top five uh, horror movie for me out of the aughts. Um, and so I was really kind of like, "Oh my God, what are they going to do with the sequel?" Bubble, you know, trying to figure out like how it was going to work. Um, and I think because it feels so different than the original is one of the reasons I love it as much as I do. Um, it just really, 
it, it feels so like this beautiful sort of love letter to 80s horror, but it's still very, you know, of the time that it's made in. Um, who doesn't love all the Jim Steinman needle drops in that movie? Hmm. I think you even wrote a piece about the pool scene. Um, I did, but I think yeah. We've, yeah, and I, in, in, the pre, in the past, we both have agreed that that pool scene is probably one of the best things ever to come, like we've seen in a long time. Um, and it still holds up. Um, but yeah, it was kind of fun because I tweeted about it. And not only did I actually turn quite a few people on to watching it, but I wasn't sure that pe- there was a lot of people out there who loved it as much as I did. And I got to see like a lot of people going, oh, my God, that movie rules and blah, blah, blah. And that's how I noticed like some people like, oh, I don't like the original, but I love this Pray at Night. And I was like, oh, interesting. Um, so, yeah, I just I, I'm a huge, huge fan of that movie. It still works exceedingly well for me. It's a movie I typically actually watch it. I usually watch both in October, um, but I was like, I'm going to turn it on and see how it goes. And it's, it still delivers. And for anybody listening out there who either hasn't seen, I'm trying to, I want to be vague because I don't know if somebody, everybody's seen it, but (coughs) I do want to say like, if you haven't had a chance to see it and you have Netflix, like I think it actually leaves Netflix on July 11th. Oh my gosh. Watch it quickly. Yes. So you've got like a few days before it's gone. So make some time if you can. Um, I, it's, it's super fun. So um, and also if because he's in literally the biggest movie of the year and possibly <laughs> potentially of all time, it's got my boy Lewis Pullman in it, Bob. a.k.a. Bob. <laughs> I can't even tell you the joy that I felt sitting in the theater or I sit just sitting in my car watching Top Gun Maverick because we started to drive in. And when I saw Bob and I saw it was Lewis Pullman, I was like, oh my God, yes. I was so happy. I like, great. Tom Cruise, Miles Teller, whoever, Jennifer Connelly, all of she's amazing. Um, I, I was excited. But Lewis Pullman for me, I was like, yes. That's when I knew the movie. That was already like three and a half stars right there. I was excited, too, because he's only one degree removed from Bill Pullman, who's one of my favorite actors. See, there you go. <laughs> only one degree. Yeah. See, if they, you know what they should have done is when they did the Independence Day sequel, is they should have had like Lewis Pullman like somehow be like involved in some like they should have done like some sort of flashbacks or something. Or, and go with me here, they should have never done an Independence Day sequel. Yes, that is true because it was terrible. And boy, I don't, that was, that was the last time I think I've truly laughed, laughed at a movie that you're not supposed to laugh at. Yeah, it's like catastrophically bad. As far as I'm concerned, some people may love it and good for them. I don't know that those people exist. I'm going to be really honest. I feel like that's a movie where we're all pretty universally like, yeah, that probably should have never happened. Yeah. Um, you know, but anyway, Lewis Pullman rules. Strangers Pray at Night rules. That is my first choice. Very nice. You, thank you. What are you going with? Well, summer is a time for sleepovers and sleepovers mean it's time for full moon movies. Oh, boy. So we're kicking things off with Puppet Master 2, uh, directed by the the lone directorial effort as of now of uh, special effects stop motion master David Allen. Uh, It's basically just a remake of the first Puppet Master, but I think it's better. It has better effects. It has more effects. It's got more puppets doing cool stuff. It's weirder. Um, the cast is a little bit stronger, uh, and I, I just felt it would be spectacularly off brand if I didn't include a full moon movie. Oh, no, totally. And it's interesting because he's a guy who came up in a conversation, um, and I am totally blanking. It's not like I did like 83 interviews or anything like that, (laughs) but somebody that I interviewed worked with him for Pillsbury Oh, really? Um, Way, way back in the day when he used to do commercials. Um, But he passed away like. Yeah, like in the uh, late 90s, I believe. Yeah. And Um, for a long time, I had like this sort of negative opinion of him, which is terrible. But he was interviewed on. I don't even know if they've included it on subsequent releases, but I had the elite special edition laser disc of The Howling. And there's an interview with Dave Allen. And he's talking about how his stuff 
mostly got, got cut, cut out. out. Yeah, it's like the werewolves in yes. the barn. And he's kind of bitter about it. And so for a long time, I was like, well, that Dave Allen, he's kind of an angry guy. And it's totally unfair. And I think he even went on the record saying like he kind of regretted that interview and they may have pulled it from some releases. I honestly don't know because I haven't searched the numerous it's, times that movie has come out since. Yeah, it's on the it's on the uh, still book. I just okay. said that because I recently had to write about the howling and wrote about that interview. Yeah, I, I, and I think it, because if you look at the footage of the barn scenes that he did yeah. in the howling, it doesn't match anything else in that movie. It's amazing to watch. It looks so cool. But it doesn't match anything else yeah, exactly. in terms of the uh, in terms of the the botine the the botine botine right. gosh you think I you think I know how to say Rob Botine's name <laughs> at this point um, any of like the stuff that they were doing with the practical special effects and stuff like that so I get it you know it's but it's I think for a lot of folks you know especially when you put so much time and energy into things like that and then to have things sort of air, unceremoniously cut. It's a bummer. But, you know, Joe Dante did say, like, you know, that he wanted to make sure that David's work didn't go completely unrecognized in that movie. That's why they have the the shot of them with the little werewolves in front of the moon. Right. So, but, yeah, that's why. Okay, I was like, gosh, I feel like this is somebody that I've just recently done a lot of research on and I couldn't yeah. put it together. But I really actually love Puppet Master 2. That was a movie I did see at a sleepover, actually. See? That's made for sleepovers. Yeah, and, I, you know, it's funny because it's been so long since I've watched the original Puppet Master. So I guess it just didn't dawn on me that it basically is like, it's, you know, Evil Dead 2 to Evil Dead kind of a scenario. Um, but yeah, I was a big fan of Puppet Master 2. Puppet Master 2, you know, it gets rid of Leech Woman because they just felt like she was too gross. <laughs> and it replaces her with Torch. And Torch is introduced setting fire to a child because Puppet Master 2 is not fucking around. No, I mean, you know, fire is cool, you know, <laughs> so I get it. I get it. But I also like Leech Woman, so. I do, too. It's, it's a bummer to see her go, but it's funny to me that everyone was grossed out by her and therefore wrote her out of the movie. Man, I hope she talked to her agent about that. I'm sure. And I think yeah, she comes yeah. back because, you know, there's like multiple prequels and at least one movie that just reuses footage. So she does get to come back. I was going to say, I feel like because I've seen a few of the Puppet Master movies, and I'll be honest, I don't get to revisit them very often. Um, although Nate Bremmer's enthusiasm for, for them uh, through his writing and his Twitter account makes me always want. I'm like, oh, I really should go back and watch the Puppet Master movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm always wanting to go back and I just never get a chance. Um, I think they're streaming but, like all the time on Tubi because I think Full Moon's whole catalog is on Tubi. It is. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I look forward to Baby Oopsie showing up there soon. So. <laughs> I still haven't seen <laughs> Baby Oopsie. I can't believe you haven't seen it. I'm I shocked. did see Attack of the 50 Foot Centerfold and I they're not Centerfold. Attack of the 50 Foot Cam Girl. Attack of the 50 Foot Cam Girl. I don't recommend it. Oh, okay. That's that's a that's a that's a skip. And I saw on. Evil Bong eight eight eight, which I also don't recommend. Okay, interesting. I mean, if they can't appease you, I then I'm like, well, I, that's not going to do me any good. Yeah, probably not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I don't, I think actually the last Evil Bong movie I watched was six six six. So yeah. I wouldn't even know how to keep up with it at this point, Patrick. <laughs> no. I'd be so lost. The Evil Bong 888 is mostly just uh, people sitting around a restaurant. Hmm, okay. Yeah. But it's got Darcy in it. It does got Darcy in it. Good for her. Yeah. It was funny because I know Charles was on yeah. the last drive-in recently. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's, there's so much I want to say about these things that I just don't say because I don't want to get the hate. But like the constant jokes about how him not paying people, I just really hope that Darcy like cashed her check immediately. Hopefully, yeah. You know, because I mean, I had a friend who interned there, and he was paid in Blu-rays. So <laughs> I've heard, you know, I've heard similar stories. You know, so I mean, look, they're still making movies, they're still doing Full Moon, and there's a lot that I appreciate about Charles Band's overall career. Yes, it's important to so, say overall career. Yes, because he did quite a bit in terms of sort yeah. of 
creating the home video industry. Right. And you can't deny like the Empire days are super fun and the early full oh, moon yeah. stuff is pretty great. Like it's kind of a shadow of its former self, but that's to be expected, I think, when he's been around as long as he has. Yeah, I'm totally blanking. Oh, uh, Head of the Family, because I actually hadn't seen that ever. That's the one that they watched on Last Drive-In. And yeah. I, I actually had fun with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty entertaining. It's kind of the last of the good full moon. I mean, it's got enough sex scenes to rival any porn movie out there. <laughs> so there's always that. If, if you're bored otherwise, there's yeah, a lot of Yeah, but it's Jacqueline sex. Lavelle, so we welcome them. Yes, you know. Um, but yeah, it's just like one of the things like, oh, we need like eight sex scenes in this movie. OK, <laughs> Some, somebody had to pad some running time. I think. Yeah, 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 for sure. Anyway, Puppet Master 2, my first pick. All right. All what's right. What's well, next I'm for gonna... you? <clears throat> so what's next for me is I went a little more modern. OK. Uh, and I actually went with a movie that came out last year. Oh, hey now. Yeah. And so my second pick is Fear Street Part 2, 1978. That's very summery. It is very summery. Um, and I, what I love about the Fear Street movies is I've actually watched the trilogy, I think, three times now in completion. Um, and they're just really super fun. But like like I said, I kind of want some summer vibes. Um, and Fear Street Part 2 really delivers those. Um, and I just... It's so fun. Like it will. Really, like I go back and forth between which one of them, between ninety four and seventy eight, do I love the most? I like sixteen sixty six, even though I, I kind of wish it was a little less of the oldie timey stuff and was more focused on like wrapping everything up. But it works and it's good and I like it. Um, but I think for me, the nineteen seventy eight installment is kind of like the peak of the Fear Street trilogy because it just like. It gives you everything like you'd really want, like to see out of a Friday the 13th movie made today. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. We're like kids at a summer camp and you actually have kids there. You've got annoying camp counselors, really great kills. You got like super like, in you know, like uh, just really like in your face villains and stuff like that. Some really, you know, interesting ways that they sort of incorporate other villains into the mix um, it's fun. It just, it really, for me, works uh, extremely well. And I was like, I actually rewatched that as well. I felt weird not to watch 94 first. <laughs> but I was like, I, you know, I got to keep, I got to keep my, you know, my focus on. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's nice to have slashers that are so recent that just still are super duper fun. Like, <sighs> I don't know that we get a whole lot of them. And I'm somebody who's easy to please when it comes to, to uh, slashers. So, yeah, I think, you know, there are probably still a lot of slashers being made and we're just not aware of them because like they're being put out by wild eye releasing or, you know, uh, just they're so low budget that they don't really even get major distribution. So it was nice that this one was uh, put out by Netflix on kind of a big scale. So it's a wide release slasher, which as you pointed out is few and far between my memory. I only saw the fear street trilogy once when it first debuted. My memory is that I liked the middle one best. That's the one with max, right? Um... Uh, Sadie sink. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She's, are you, are she's you Max from her, Stranger like, Things. Stranger Things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm out of that loop. My kids so. have been obsessed with Stranger Things lately, especially Aww. my 10 year old daughter. So we've watched That's a lot awesome. of Stranger Things. Yeah. I hope it's kind of a gateway to other stuff, you know? Um, but Sadie Sink is great. And so I remember really liking her in that movie. And I just liked the 70s summer camp vibes because it felt like a Friday the 13th movie, just as you said. Yeah, it was really fun, too, because, like, it, it just feels like there's only certain things that, like, Netflix makes a big deal about anymore. And Stranger Things is one of them. Yeah. And there's not a whole lot else, because I think most of us, like, do the game. We're like, we're like, wait, Netflix released this movie? Wait, this is on Netflix? Like, and they don't really, because they put out so much these days, They I don't feel like they promote, especially their genre stuff, as much as they could. Um you know, if it's not Stranger Things, I don't feel like they put a whole lot into it, but they really no. went all out for the Fear Street movies. 
uh, which was super fun. Because I remember even for this one, I went to the premiere, which was at like the uh, L.A. State Park. And they had like a big like screen outdoor screening of it. And people dressed up as the different killers from the Fear Street movies running around. Um, and it was super fun. Like I was like, wow, they actually put a little little oomph into it. So, yeah. You know, so, yeah, but I, I know I have to get on the Stranger Things train. We we did the start of the first season when it came out back in the day and then got sidetracked. And I know I'm going to get back to it. So, you know, it's you know, I, I, I won't demand that anybody watch it. I'm, I'm glad that my kids like it. If my kids didn't want to watch it, I'm not positive that we would have. But I'm glad we did. I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I don't have anything bad to say about it. It's just there's nothing about it that I'm like, oh, my God, you have to watch Stranger Things. Yeah, I think it's for me. It's just like the the and I hate to say this because everybody always talks about this and I always get sort of away from it. But maybe there is sort of a semblance of truth to this. But I think like the overhype machine for them. Oh, sure. Was like so in overdrive. Yeah. That I was just like, Ugh, OK. But at the same time, like I did the same thing with Breaking Bad. So I'm obviously a really bad media consumer. So. <laughs> well, you so. just got around to watching The Sopranos, right? I did. Well, that I didn't have cable for most of those years, oh, okay. so, you know, or I didn't have HBO. So, you know, okay. that was sort of on me. Break, but Breaking Bad like came out, like started like when I wasn't really watching TV. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then I was like and then by the time I was, it was like three or four seasons in and I who has time to catch up, you know. So anyway, I'm going to get to Stranger Things probably before the end of this summer. So, All right. you know, I know I'm going to like it. Yeah, but, it's a good summer you know, show. Yeah. So, but yeah, I was just excited. I was like, hey, look, I can actually put a slasher that came out within like a year. Right. In fact, I think it actually, today is, what is today's date? Jesus Christ. July 6th. All right. Because it premiered on July 8th. Hey, now. And then it was released on July 9th on Netflix. Wow. So, yeah. So we are literally a year removed from when the Fear Street trilogy was dominating our conversation <laughs> the big bummer about it being a netflix movie is that there's no physical release criterion sometimes puts out netflix movies like they did the irishman and they've done uh roma and they did a couple other ones but uh didn't they do uncut gems too yeah but that wasn't a oh. netflix movie oh for some reason i thought it was no okay um so what i'm saying is get on it criterion and put out the fear street trilogy yeah, totally. You don't have to be all hoity-toity. Exactly. Like, just, give us what, just, give us, just give the people what they want. Yeah. Heather will do a commentary yeah. for it. Yeah, I, I'm here. Just use me. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> um, my, so what's your next choice? Yeah, my second pick. Uh, again, I decided to just stay completely on brand. And I went with the second installment of a franchise that I have very little interest in with the exception of movie number two because it is directed by one joe lynch and that is wrong turn two colon dead end uh, nice. which is very much a you know backwoods set slasher movie with great mutant cannibal villains and amazing bloody gory kills uh, a terrific performance by Henry Rollins as this former military dude who's out like hosting a reality show now. Um, you get Erica Learson from Blair Witch 2 as your final girl. Um, it's I, I, I the first wrong turn is fine. I have nothing against it, but I have nothing really for it either. I don't even think I've seen it since theaters. I've dipped into some of the sequels and just I know they're not for me. Uh, but Wrong Turn 2 is for me, you know, the rare slasher sequel that improves upon its predecessor in pretty much every way. Yeah, I, I remember how I saw it. Like Probably with your I eyes. I, yes, probably with my eyes. I'm trying to remember... I think I might have seen it before I saw Wrong Turn. I think I was angry about Wrong Turn. Because, you know, having family from West Virginia, like, oh, of course, there's a bunch of inbred <laughs> cannibals. Like, look, if I need, if I want to experience that, I'll just go for a family reunion at this point. But, um, bump, um, you know, 
so I was just kind of like, eh. But I actually think I remember watching Wrong Turn 2 before seeing Wrong Turn. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think, honestly, I think it was, I think we rented it because of Henry Rollins. Sure. It's a good reason to rent it. Yeah. Uh, and I remember it being pretty fun. I think I remember seeing three, which... That was Declan O'Brien, I think. I think he did most of the sequels, and I know he passed away fairly recently, so I don't want to speak ill. No, I wouldn't speak ill of him, because he actually... The thing is, it's like, I think he was a for-hire guy okay. on a lot of stuff. Um, but I think he was okay with that. Um, like, because he was working, and he ultimately... I got to interview him a few times over the years, and I think he was just somebody who he knew kind of what he was doing wasn't going to be perceived as like the highest art form of horror, but he had such enthusiasm for just delivering stuff that he knew fans would enjoy if they could just get past sort of the, Oh, you're making a wrong turn five, you know, Oh, you're doing joy ride three, <laughs> uh, which actually I remember liking joy ride three. Okay. Now that I'm kind of thinking about it. Um, you know, and he also did, I, I, if I remember correctly, he did one of like the, Shark does something or others for Corman too, but I don't remember which one. Um, let's see. Hold on, I'm Shark, looking right Shark-tipus? now. Sharktopus. He did do Sharktopus. Okay, that's yeah. right. It was when Corman was doing all of those sort of mishmash movies. Yeah. Mishmash monsters. Who doesn't love them? Um, <laughs> but no, he was like a guy who like he knew like what he was doing, but he was having fun, and he was living his dream. He was making movies, and so I think honestly, like. You know, I don't I think some people sort of like I think because we grew up at a time where like we have these people who became our master, like the masters of horror. We had our John Carpenters and our Toby Hoopers and our Wes Cravens and things like that. And I think we put too much weight on people who don't fit that bill. We're like they can still be a solid director, even if they're not, quote unquote, of a certain caliber, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, but he was really nice. I, I talked to him a few times. So like, I, I only know his work from those three wrong turn sequels that he did. And like I said, they were not for me. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I, I totally I agree with what you're saying. What's that? I think I talked to him. I, I think I interviewed him for wrong turn five. OK, which was yeah, the last one he did. That. I think he did three, four. And yeah. Five. Um, I totally agree with what you're saying in terms of, you know, with anything time with anything related to horror, I should say time elevates the consensus. So even a director who probably in the eighties was seen as kind of a hack, like Steve Miner. Now we look back and we're like, boy, Steve Miner really made some good movies. Steve Miner was a really good journeyman director. And maybe, you know, unfortunately, Declan O'Brien has passed away now and won't live to see that kind of reassessment of his career. But maybe with time, people will be like, yeah, I don't love those movies, but Declan O'Brien knew how to put a movie together for cheap. You know, uh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, sorry. Sorry, we got so like depressing all of a sudden. Apologize, everybody. Um, but yeah, no, I. It's, yeah, you know, I mean, it's not like I would be like, oh, everybody has to, you know, catch up on the wrong turn movies. But the <laughs> thing is, I feel like people might be surprised that they're they're not what they think. Like, I, because I remember going into five going, oh, okay. Yeah. We all know what the fifth installment of franchises are like, historically. <laughs> the you best. Know, and we're talking... Well, we're talking about like Halloween five. We're talking oh, about okay. Nightmare five. We're talking about, you know what I mean? Like Friday five. Friday five. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, they don't typically have the best track record overall. Sure. Yeah. You know, although we did get Seed of Chucky as five and I will forever defend. Seed of Chucky is like my Friday five. Okay. It's the it's the installment in the franchise that everybody likes to poop on, but I still love it. No, so, I, the only Child's Play movie I don't dig on is three. Yeah, I actually tried watching three over over Halloween season times because it was on Sci Fi a bunch because of uh, the Chucky series. Yeah, and I still try. I, I Me mean, too. there's some great great effects in it, but boy, that's about it. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm just I I don't dig it. But then there's people who that's their favorite installment. So you know, the world is yeah. a rainbow. It is. It is. And you know what? It's okay to love what you love. That's right. Um, did you see the the uh, the wrong turn reboot? I guess you would call it the Matthew Modine one. I haven't. It's actually on my DVR. Okay. Um, I actually recorded it. We got like one of the premium channels last, actually, I think it was like last December or something like that. And it was on and I had written it off because one, I just don't have time until I was like, eh, whatever. Um, but then I heard a lot of people sort of talking about it very favorably. And so I think I'm kind of saving it for October this year. But I think I'm going to give it a go. Did you see it? I did. I think it's totally worth watching. I, I don't love okay. it. But I, like you, wrote it off. I was like, oh, I just have no interest in it. Because I was expecting, like, you know, like the Cabin Fever remake or something like that. I was just like, it's too soon to be rebooting Wrong Turn. As I said, I have very little use for the Wrong Turn franchise overall, with the exception of Part 2. Um and so I just wasn't interested, but I heard some some good stuff about it. So I checked it out and I was pleasantly surprised. Like I said, it's not great, but it's totally worth watching. OK, you've talked me into it. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, and if you're listening uh, and you've never seen a wrong turn movie, you really only need to see two and support my man, Joe Lynch. But here's the thing, though. Stan Winston did the effects on part one. True. And the effects are good. And the movie's fine. The movie's fine. See Wrong Turn also. But make sure you see Wrong Turn too. That's... The, oh, yeah. That's the best one. Gotcha. I I would agree. Um. All right. We're up to your number three now. Uh, yeah. So for my next pick, we're going to uh, take a trip over to Camp Rolling Hills for Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. I was expecting this one. (laughs) So it's funny because I used to, because I've seen three the least, I've always like, oh, three is like totally like up there with two. Uh, And I rewatched two and three this weekend as well. Um, Two is definitely my favorite of the sequels. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it definitely definitely flows a lot better than three does. Three has some fun parts and, you know, Angela does get to dispatch of of, of a bigot. Which is a really nice twist. <laughs> um, so that's cool. And she gets to sort of fight some racism and some other terrible things as well. Um, but two for me, like, I almost started singing the, uh, the the Happy Camper song, but I didn't because nobody needs to hear that. Um, but are you a happy camper, Patrick? Do you love the summer sun? I'm a happy-ish camper. Okay. Do you love the trees in the forest? Are you always <laughs> having fun? <laughs> Tell me, Patrick, are you a happy camper? Do you love the clear blue sky? <laughs> um, I I will admit to not being as in love with some of the Sleepaway Camp sequels as everyone. But uh, I respect that it's on your list. And I, like I said, I was expecting it to be there. Yes, I totally, my, my thing dropped out there again. So I don't know what's going on with my interwebs this evening. Um, cause I have full service, so that's weird. So I missed a little bit of what you said there. Just that I don't, uh, I'm not as in love with the Sleepaway Camp sequels as everyone else, but I respect this choice and expected it to be here. Yeah, look, you know, I get it. Um, I think for me, like the original Sleepaway Camp is still one of those movies where like, man, I love to screw up my friends by showing it to them when I was a kid. Um, because it was just not the movie they were expecting and got into a lot of trouble for that. But I think for me, too, be, with two especially, because they really lean into the to, to comedy in it. Um, yeah. You know, and honestly, if you're if you're looking to see a lot of boobies, that movie has got like a plethora of boobies. Like there's oh, a I booby don't. shot. that. I don't remember mm-hmm. that. Oh, there's like a booby shot, like probably at least every two to three minutes in that movie. I, I guess I so, have to rewatch Sleepaway Camp too. I think you do, uh, <laughs> and I also, and I'm also a really big fan of Renee Estevez from uh, because she's also in Heather's. Right. So I like that she's in. I, I, I like that she's sort of the final girl in this uh, as well. Um, but yeah, and I, it's funny because I, the night before we watched the Sleepaway Camp movies, 
AMC had Fast Times at Ridgemont High on, um, which I've gone through this weird phase where I kind of watch that movie a lot. Which it's not a movie I really grew up with, but somehow I like actually love it more as an adult. <laughs> um, but I totally never realized that Pamela Springsteen was also in Fast Time as well. Yeah, she's the other cheerleader, she, right? It's her and Kelly Maroney. Yeah, yeah. Which come on, that's like the best <laughs> you know cheerleaders you could hope for in, in the nineteen eighties. So, but yeah, I mean, it's like I, I, for me, like. Is it going to live up to the original? No, but it goes out and has some fun with it. And, you know, it also tips its hat to some of the other, you know, big horror villains out there. But honestly, like when we talk about like memorable horror icons, like I feel like Angela Baker slash Angela Johnson uh, hmm. is, is a character that I feel like deserves to be recognized. Like we're getting a little bit more of Claire from Hellraiser one and two yeah. these days. Yeah. But I think, you know, I think we need to really pay tribute to Angela because also like, especially in two and three, it's like, she's just dispatching of like really terrible people. I love the, uh, the sisters totally blanking on their, they have a funny name for the sisters. I can't believe I'm totally blanking on them. Yeah, I don't. Oh, know. The sh- they call they call them the shit sisters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So, and she like kills somebody by putting them in like an outhouse. Like, <laughs> okay. I remember that. Yeah. So you know, fun times. <laughs> I do. I honestly am due for a rewatch because back in the '90s or whenever I first saw it. I really wasn't crazy about it because I just felt like the what I like so much about the original Sleepaway Camp is that it plays it so straight. Um, it's so sincere about all its weirdness and ugliness. And so this one was so silly that I was like, no, come on, you're not Sleepaway Camp. And now I've learned to embrace the silliness and I enjoy part two. I don't remember part three very well. I just remember liking it less than two. Yeah, and also what's fun about it is like the two, there's like two little kids who are like on constant booby patrol in that movie. <laughs> um, and the kids' names are Charlie and Emilio. Oh, very nice. Yes, named well after done. Renee's brothers, of course. Right. Yes. So it works on a lot of different levels. I also think it's funny that the other characters too, like there's a character named Judd in it as well. Uh, and another character named Anthony. Like it just feels like it's, and there's like Molly and Demi and it just feels like it's like this huge like love letter to like 80s cinema. Yeah. Especially like 80s teen cinema. So and also I totally blinked on this. There's also a character named Mayor. And Mayor Winningham, of course, was in uh, S- St. Elmo's Fire. Yeah. So anyway, I just think that there's oh, there's an alley too. Holy shit. This movie just completely unlocked in my brain. Yeah. They went for the whole Brat Pack. Wow, they really did. How did I not pick up on that? And there's a brook because Brook Shields was everywhere in the 80s. <laughs> wow. All right. Also, TC is like w- one of my favorite characters in the sequel because he looks like he's like the love child of like Dave Coulier and like Michael uh, DeLuise. Interesting. Okay. Yes. So anyway, you're you're definitely due for a rewatch. All right. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And good. Yeah, and good luck, like, because it's not streaming anymore, or I don't think it's streaming very, I think you have to, like, buy it off of places, and of course, the Blu-ray is long out of print at this point, because I think, like, people are selling it for, like, a couple hundred bucks, so. Oh my gosh, really? I have the Blu-ray, but I didn't realize it was, yeah. yeah. I didn't know it was out of print. So anyway, anyway, just realizing all of the names in the movie, I was like, wow, this totally just opened up for me, like, what a love letter to 80s teen movies this really was as a whole and a, not even just horror yeah but in general yeah so there you go all right all right good pick all right so what's your what's your yeah what's your next pick uh i'm gonna stay on brand once again and go for a rob zombie movie this is a little controversial because i'm not positive this sequel counts as a slasher franchise I- I have a feeling we probably have the same. I have what I I have one with a question mark next to it from the same director. I so we might have had the same choice. I deliberately went with a 
one that you probably wouldn't expect because I thought you might oh. have the second movie in the franchise. So oh. I picked the third movie in the franchise. Interesting. Um, oh. So I picked Three from Hell because I was expecting if you were going to pick a Rob Zombie that it would be the Devil's Rejects. Am I correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. But I'm like, is it, does they, do they count as slashers? Let's like, say they do. Ethic? Okay, I like it. Just that for rules. our purposes. Mm. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, Three from Hell is another movie that I saw, you know, when they did the Fathom event. And I was like, ah, it's a mixed bag. I like some of it. I don't like some of it. And then the more times I watched it, the more I've kind of warmed up to it. So I've seen it probably five or six times now at this point. Um, oh, wow. I know. It's weird that I keep revisiting that movie. But for whatever reason I do, I'm like drawn to it, which leads me to believe I actually like it. Um, it feels <laughs> very summery again, because half the movie is set in Mexico where it's, you know, swelteringly hot and very dusty. Um, Sherry Moon Zombie gives my favorite of all her performances in the movie. I know that, you know, I like Richard Brake a lot. I wish they would have done some different things with his character. Obviously, you know, they were working uh, in the face of a tragedy because they lost Sid Haig and had to basically rewrite the entire movie to incorporate his loss. Um, and I still wish that they had just changed the dynamic a little bit with Richard Brake, because as it is, he's just Otis part two. And I wish that he maybe hadn't been a family member and had just been some weird, crazy fan. Uh, and that that had created some tension, but instead there's really no tension amongst the group and it's just business as usual. But whatever, I still like the movie. Um, it's it's unpleasant in a lot of the right ways, uh, but it's got some great set pieces and... Uh, I like what Bill Mosley and particularly Sherry Moon Zombie are doing. So I've I've really come around on that movie and I really kind of like it now uh, and thought it would work in our summer slasher marathon sequel marathon. I I dig it. Yeah, I think there's like a there's a certain monologue that Bill does in that movie. And I've only seen it twice. So I'm, I'm, it's not as fresh in my head, but there's like a certain monologue that he does in that movie where I was just like, I remember thinking like, after I saw that, I was like, God damn, that is a scene. Mm -hmm. Like it was just such a different approach to the character of Otis, which like, if you watch all three movies, Otis is different completely in all three movies. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, which is good. I like that. I think that's an interesting thing. It's almost like looking at like these characters through different lenses uh, and all that kind of stuff, which is intriguing because so many times, especially when you're dealing with sequels, you get a lot of the same. Um, you know, and I know a lot of people were like, well, you know, there's a, it's like so different Devil's Rejects versus House of the Corpse. I was like, good, it should be. And then Three from Hell is, oh, it's, you know, it's not, it's so different. You know, these characters are so different than we saw them in Devil's Rejects. Good. Yeah. They should be, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I agree. There, that, that scene when Sherry has to do the knife throwing, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Isn't there like a scene where like the dudes are like trying to like. Yeah, they go out behind the bar and they're doing like. Yeah, they're, yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a fantastic scene. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I really liked it a lot. And I, I agree. I wish Richard Brake's dynamic was a little different in it, but I think he's really good in it. Like, he is. He's always you good. Know? You know, it's not his fault. I just wish they had been a little more creative in terms of like coming up with something different for him to do. Yeah. And I think honestly, if I'm remembering correctly, I think it wasn't, it wasn't that Sid had passed. I think he was just really Too sick, sick when they to do the it. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then basically, I think he died like a few days after it came out, if I'm remembering how that all transpired. Um, you might be right. I don't remember exactly when he passed away. I feel like if I'm, I feel like it was, I was at Fantastic Fest. I think yeah, when he happened, died so in September, was... which is around when the movie came out. So you're probably right. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, if, if nothing else, at least we got sort of that one last little moment with him yeah um but yeah it's you know it's one of those like it's hard to work you know and make that you know work for everybody but also i love that rob was like okay let's figure out a way for him to do this because he wants to do this not because 
or trying to Bruce Willis him and put <laughs> him in movies just to make money off of him or right. anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because that, because everybody I think that works with Rob is there because they're passionate about supporting Rob and his vision. So, you know, I think that's why. So, um, but yeah, good pick. I, I was devil's rejects is one of my alternates because I was like, I wasn't quite sure if it's was technically a slasher. I don't know what else you would call, call it, it right? but I, I'm with you. It's like, I don't know if it's a slasher. The internet called it a slasher. I ran with it, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what it would be if you don't call it a slasher. Yeah. Like if, if Google says it's a slasher, like who am I to, who am I to argue with Sir Google? I'm nobody. <laughs> So, uh, are you excited about the monsters? So excited about the monsters. Yeah. I wasn't sure what to expect before I saw that little teaser. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think it's so funny how everyone's like, Oh, Rob Zombie's going to come out and make an R rated monsters movie. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, you guys just are so narrow minded about shit. That makes me angry because it's like, they just think like that Rob exists in this certain like F bomb dropping back right. that he couldn't possibly make something outside of that. Right. And sure. He hasn't really proven us proven that differently up until this point, but knowing like having the chance to talk to him. And I think even like, I remember when I was at Sundance for 31 and like, he's got like monsters tattoos and stuff like that. Like this is, a world that he has worshipped since he was a kid. <laughs> so, like, to think that he's going to come at this and try to make it into something that it isn't, like, is just extremely dumb. <laughs> and that first teaser, perfect, loved it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I just, super I just, excited. I just love the now what <laughs> sort of moment of it, and I think the makeup looks great. I'm really excited, um, you know. And and I'm I'm super excited that I think we should be getting it probably around Halloween. I'm hoping. Do you that, think it's going to be another one of these like fathom event things? Because both he and Kevin Smith have kind of gone that route for their last couple of movies, and we just found out Clerks Three, which just released its trailer today, is is having a similar release. So, do you think the Monsters is going to do that too? Or I've also I think heard it's going this. To Peacock. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was going to say because I've heard that floated as well. Yeah, I think they're probably with how they do some of the Peacock titles. Like, I think we'll get like a limited theatrical with it, um, but it'll also be on Peacock. OK, so, you know, which, I, you know, I mean, honestly, like the amount of money it costs people to take like their whole families to movies these days. Like, I get it. So, like, if this gets like families to watch the Munsters with their kids in October, yeah. like, you know, and they have to do it via Peacock. Cool. Love it. Yeah. You know, um, I am hoping that we get to see it in theaters, but I mean, they did the same thing with Firestarter and, you know, and then they brought Firestarter back to the drive in with the black phone. And I was like, why would you do this? <sighs> so you could leave after the black phone. I guess. I saw Firestarter. So, I saw Firestarter, too. I, I will say that I was I was on the cusp of OK with it. But now I actually watched it again because I was like, well, was I being too mean? Blah, blah, blah. No, you were not. I wasn't. I actually liked <laughs> it less the yeah. second time I watched it. And you like I am like an F on like super fan. And boy, it made me angry to see what they did. Yeah. Like, like you couldn't give these this cast something to do. Like, I loved that I got to talk to Kurt Smith because we had a really great interview. But boy, oh, boy. What a way to completely create a nothing character. Like that character introduced, it did nothing. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it didn't work. Yeah. So I didn't pick prior starters. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So, but in any case, I'm really excited to see what uh, Rob does with the monsters. And I think it's going to be super fun. Me too. I can't wait. Yeah. So I'm just hoping that they, I really hope that they understand that October is the best time to put it out. I know that Universal also has Halloween ends that month, but it's not the only, you know, we can have a, a couple of horror movies in October. It's okay. I'll take it. Yes, I will take it too. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. So what is your fifth and final pick for the all right. summer slasher sequel marathon? I, 
I decided to stay away from sort of the biggers. I, my, my alternates were, you know, along the lines of Devil's Rejects or Friday 4. I even had Cedar Chucky on here just in case, you yeah, know, because yeah. I, was, I wasn't sure if we were going to overlap or anything. Um, but I went with a movie that I saw once when I was a teenager. And then I revisited it about three months ago and forgot how amazingly fun it was. And I was like, yes, this is how I would cap off my little summer sequel slasher marathon. If I could throw a few extra words in there, I, <laughs> I would. Um, but I'm going to go with uh, Deborah Brock's 1987 Slumber Party Massacre 2. Perfect. Yes. Um, it's a movie. I remember liking it when I was a kid and thinking it was really silly because I remember I, I saw the original Slumber, Slumber Party Massacre and part two, the same sleepover. Um, and I remember like thinking like, wow, these movies are crazy and weird, but I love that. Um, and then I just didn't watch part two for a really long time for some dumb reason. And then decided like a couple months ago, I was like, yeah, it is time to rewatch Slumber Party Massacre 2. And I was like, hell yes, this movie rules. Why don't I watch this more? I like the uh, the original by Amy Holden Jones. Oh, yeah. I like what she was doing in terms of sort of satirizing the slasher movie. And, uh, you know, it's it's obviously got a lot of gender politics on its mind. But I am sort of in the camp that likes part two better than part one. I just think it's a way more entertaining movie and way more fun. Totally. And I actually think in a lot of ways, two makes one better. I think if you watch both of them back to back because of sort of the callbacks, like I think it actually almost in retroactively makes one a little more entertaining, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Sure. Um, just because like you basically are opening with uh, Courtney sort of reliving the trauma of what happens in the first movie and then sort of having to deal with it. So I think I think retroactively it makes those characters like her character in the first movie even more interesting yeah um and she's a and that the character of courtney in the original summer party massacre for me is a highlight um just because she's like so horny and strange like <laughs> it's just they're just so open about it so you know um but yeah like i just it, it's so weird but i just had never really remembered like how crazy the driller killer was in that movie and how over the top um, and how fun the kills are in that movie. It rules. It rules hard. Yeah, for sure. Just, again, the fact that they, you know, kind of turn parts of it into a musical. It's like, well, this movie rules. Yeah. I mean, I'm a sucker for, for movie musicals. So anytime you can kind of switch it up and do that, like, I'm I'm completely on board. And it's funny because, like, we always talk about, like, how in movies, like, people always roll their eyes now when like characters have like familiar sounding names, but I'm sorry. I get excited about officer Kruger and officer Voorhees. <laughs> and I, I will cut it some slack if it happened in the eighties, but if you're doing that shit in 2022, I will roll my eyes. Here's the thing though. With they're doing it now, it's probably meant for people like us because I don't know that just casual movie fans who maybe aren't like, you know what I mean? Like in yeah. the 80s, everybody knew Jason Voorhees, everybody knew Freddy Krueger, right? But it's also been like 12 years since we've had a Freddy Krueger movie in a theater. It's been 13 years since we've had a Jason Voorhees movie in theaters. Do kids who aren't exposed to horror, do they know who those characters are? Right. So for me, I almost feel like those are kind of deep cuts for us. Like sure. that, those are little moments for us, but I get it. I get it. But it was like, if I have to hear people complain, like, discount a movie because somebody's last name is, like, Dante or Carpenter or <laughs> Hooper or Craven, I'm just like, come on, lighten up. <laughs> it's not enough to ruin a movie for me, but it is a, a fairly well-worn trope that maybe we can retire for a little while. Yeah, but again, I feel like a lot of those are for us. They're yeah. not for the, cas for the, the casual fans out there. The cashies, if the you will. Ca <laughs> I don't know. Is that what the kids say? Who knows? I'm pretty sure. So, but anyway, Slumber Party Massacre 2 rules really hard. Um, and I was like, I needed fun to end this with. Yeah. And that one delivers on the fun fun factor. 
great pick and on my list of alternates as well. Nice. Yeah. I want to say too, the guy who plays the driller killer, he has like, like a really interesting, like he's like the story. he's like the heir to the Little Caesar's fortune or something. Am I remembering this wrong? No, I feel like you're right. Um, like, he yeah. Was, oh, he was like a like a like also like an uh like from like the automotive magnets or like he was like so, like something really crazy. Like I think because like he only did like two or three movies, and then went and just did business stuff. So, yeah, I could hear you looking. I was typing it, yeah, to see if I could find anything out about him. Uh, he's the president and chief executive officer. Oh, this might be his dad. Oh, no, he's the son of, okay, so. Yeah, his, his dad owned the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, his companies include Little Caesars Pizza. <laughs> Oh my goodness. The Detroit Tigers, the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, wow, he's very, very rich. Yeah. Who knew? Go go drill or killer. Get your get your bag. Right? Yeah. Wow. That's so weird that we both had that in the back of our minds. I just remember looking it up after I saw this movie because I was like, I don't feel like I've seen this guy in anything else, really. Yeah. Because I didn't see Rage and Cajun or whatever else he was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rage and Cajun. I don't mean to, you know, be mean, but I, I haven't seen you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what is what is your last pick? I feel like I know what the last pick is, but I feel like my thought is too obvious. No, you're probably and, exactly right. Okay. Given how on brand I've been for this entire marathon, call what, you Captain Surprise over there. Right. What would you expect my final pick to be? I feel like my 50 50 gut thought on this is it's either a hatchet movie uh -huh. or Texas Chainsaw 2. All right. Well, I'll tell you what Victor Crowley was on my list of alternates, and Texas Chainsaw 2 is my last pick. So you yeah. are. Exactly right. This is why we are horror BFFs. I was um, just going to say that. So weird. Yeah. So, I, you know, how could I not include this? Um, right. Obviously, it's a pretty big franchise, but it's my favorite movie from this franchise. Uh, I like it even more than the original, which, again, I know is blasphemy, but it's just much more sort of tonally up my alley than the original Texas Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw is like this piece of art that I can look at and appreciate and admire, and it's perfect and beautiful, and but it's like hard to watch at times because it's just very uh, unrelenting and intense. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2 is hilarious and gory and silly and all the things that I like horror movies to be. Um, it's also the most, I think it's the most Toby Hooper movie ever made. Yeah, you know. I, I, you know, you know me, and that I've been pitching for us once we're done with Craven Craven to start doing with hanging with Mr. Hooper or <laughs> hanging with Toby Hooper, um, because it's actually been a while since I've watched Texas Chainsaw Two, while. and I, it's like I want to save that experience for like a big discussion with you. Do you know what I mean? Oh, cool. Because like, yeah. I, I can't like just watch Texas Chainsaw Two just leisurely and not think like oh my god i have to talk to patrick <laughs> so um but i was like i was like i just I can't imagine you doing a slasher sequel list and not having texas chainsaw 2 on it yeah you know and uh, and again with, with what makes those movies so great is like they just they just ooze like this like feeling of summerness and like oppressive like discomforting heat kind of things yeah. and yeah. So, yeah. Good pick. I, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Yeah, you were right. It is currently streaming on Prime if you did feel like revisiting it. It was on Shudder for a very short time. Yeah, they Shudder had like Poltergeist for like a month. Also, yeah, it's, but... it's I don't know how they license stuff. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I know the um, Scream Factory Blu-ray is now out of print, I want to say, but Vinegar Syndrome, of course, is putting out a 4K uh, at the end of the year. 
Mm. Like and are I, you involved with that? Because you should be involved with that. Who I should be. To? I don't know who I talk to. Like, that should happen. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited yeah, for everybody, it, though. Yeah, no, everybody listening, like, reach out to Vinegar Syndrome and be like, hey, Patrick Bromley should be involved with this <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to do it. <sighs> oh, not necessary. I'm I'm going to I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> okay. Look, all I'm saying is if there was ever a criterion that was with Point Break and yeah. I didn't get to be involved with it, like yeah. I don't know how I would go on to be honest. That so, would be shitty. you know. We we all have things that we are destined for and I feel like this is your <laughs> destiny. You might be right. Yeah. So let's make this happen. All let's right. make some magic. All right. Yeah, so but I, I, I like that I knew you so I was like, well, it's either going to be a hatchet movie. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's got to be Texas Chainsaw 2, but he might throw a, me for a loop a little bit, not want to be so on brand. No, he would then turns do... out I'm fine being utterly predictable. No, it's it's great. I, I dig it. Plus, yeah. I also think you're predictable in a way that wasn't predictable, if that makes sense. Oh, OK. So, because I wasn't expecting Puppet Master 2. Was I expecting something Full Moon-esque to show up? Yeah. But I wasn't <laughs> sure which where we were going to go with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I dig it. Um, do you have other alternates that you want to name? Um, yeah. Like I said, I had Friday 4, Devil's Rejects, Seed of Chucky. And then um, I think another movie that a lot of people sort of looked down on that I actually really dug that also came out last year, was which was Don't Breathe 2. Um, I and need I to get see it. that again. Yeah, like I, I get it. It's not like everything, but I really liked it. Um, to me, like it just, it really, again, because it wasn't just a rehash of everything in the first one. Right. Um, and it also didn't try to make uh, Stephen, oh my goodness, you should know his name because he's an avatar. Uh, Lang. Lang. Slang, yeah. as Fetty Alvarez calls him. Yeah, it didn't try to make slang into somebody who we should technically feel sympathetic right. towards. Right. Like, the marketing made good... it seem that way and people lost their shit, but that's oh, not the movie. What? On the internet? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Judging something before seeing it? You're kidding. What? I feel like that's only what Twitter is for these days. <laughs> um, yeah, and I feel like, you know, I mean, he is probably more sympathetically portrayed in the sequel than the first one. But I think they also do a really good job of pointing out that the guy is still a bastard. Right. And he's done terrible things and right. they don't try to make excuses for it. Yeah. So, so I dug it. I'm into it. So yeah. What were you, what were your other, uh, uh, alternates? I've got the aforementioned slumber party massacre Two, Victor Crowley child's play Two. Uh, Maniac Cop 2. Oh, such a good one. Yeah. Oh, shit. Can we go back and start over a second with Maniac Cop 2 on better, that list? Better than the original. Uh, and oh, then the one yeah. that I really wanted to work in but couldn't, another like controversial, is it a slasher or not? And that is, it doesn't feel right in summer. This is much more of a fall movie, but uh, Psycho 2. Interesting. Yeah. I love Psycho 2. I do love Psycho 2. So I've actually come around a lot on three and four as well over the years. They're all good. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Weirdly enough, I don't think there's a bad psycho movie. Yeah. I mean, they're never going to be psycho. Exactly. But they don't need, but they don't need to be. Right. If that makes sense. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, it's almost criminal how good psycho two is because it shouldn't be that good. Right. No, it should be the worst. Like, <laughs> but it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. So, uh, well, we we can do fall slasher sequels <laughs> just sure we, we need re ideas just let's do it <laughs> let's recycle the show again and later this year it's why great. not <laughs> let's just start doing it monthly yeah here's, I our, actually, here's our august uh, slasher sequel idea <laughs> i actually almost thought i was gonna cheat a little bit and put x in my list because technically even though it's the first movie oh. it's gonna be a sequel i see what you did there that is a good one though it's a good yeah. summer summer slasher it is. I actually just rewatched it for the fifth time this year. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I've seen that a lot. So I hope Brittany Snow wins some awards for it. God, she's so good. Like I still get like tingly and emotional during the landslide scene, like yeah. so much. 
like everybody in that movie is so freaking good. It just if you uh, haven't already and you're listening to this, go read Heather's piece on the landslide scene. It's so good. It, oh, thank you. Um, I even forgot that I actually wrote something worth 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 mentioning about that movie. <laughs> Um, although I did kind of get to do the cover article for the X Fangoria issue, yeah, so that you was cool. Did. Yeah, I become sort of the the X girl of 2022, if you will. Nice. Um, but but yeah, no, I it's I it's I actually just rewatched Scream 2022 again, so they're both tied. I've I've watched both of those five times this year. So, um, but up until that point, that was my most rewatched movie of this year. So wow, yeah. So good times. God, I love Ty. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, I guess that's going to do it for this episode of Corpse Club Horror BFFs. Thank you guys so much for listening. And thanks to Brian, our tireless engineer, for editing this episode and all its weird (laughs) Internet dropouts. So apologies (laughs) to Brian as well as thanks. Um (laughs) Uh, on behalf of my horror BFF, Heather, I'll just say, uh, until next time, stay scary. Mm-hmm.